evening. This one for the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. What's up, man? What y'all doing? Floyd stopping by. Say hello here, too. Strong words, as we said, from Floyd Mayweather. This is the fight coming up between Aris Lani Lara and the challenger, Ishe Smith. Earlier tonight, my partner Steve Farrow had a chance to catch up with both fighters, starting with Aris Lani Lara. Louis de Cubas Jr. will translate. Eris Landy, you believed that you beat Canelo. I thought you beat Canelo. The judges disagreed, but the fans were disappointed in the way you fought the fight. Too defensive, too much movement. Will that criticism affect how you fight tonight? Eh, tú pensaste que ganaste a Canelo. Él pensó que tú le ganaste a Canelo. Eh, los jueces no lo vieron así, pero muchos fanáticos no están contentos porque te moviste mucho y, y, y estaba un poco defensivo. Eso va a cambiar la táctica tuya, el, el, el estilo tuyo. No, claro que no. Vamos a llevar a, a el ring, vamos a llevar el, el trabajo que hicimos en el gimnasio. Y como tú entrenas en, en el gimnasio, es como tú, tú llevas el resultado de la pelea. Así entrenamos y, y vamos a estar bien para la pelea. He says, you know, my main focus is, is on this fight right now. Um, I trained every every style different, every fight different. And basically the way we train is, is the way we're going to fight this fight. And uh, we're coming here to win. What is the game plan then? What kind of fight will you fight against Ishe Smith? ¿Qué es el plan para Ishe Smith? Le voy a mostrar al público ahí, no voy a, lo voy a, lo voy a eh, trabajar con él en el medio ring. Vamos a ver qué trae ahí. Yo estoy listo. Says, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm going to stand right there in the middle of the ring with him, and, uh, and I'm going to box him smartly right there in the middle of the ring. Eris Landy has fought everybody in the junior middleweight division. Where does he feel Ishe stands on that list? Tuvo pelea con todos los peleadores en 154 libras. ¿Dónde tú crees que está Ishe Smith en ese nivel? No sé si tiene nivel que está. Nunca le he visto pelear. No sé ni cómo pelea. No sé qué clase de boxeador es. Solamente confío en mi, mi preparación y, y el trabajo mío. No sé en qué nivel. Denle un número a usted. Para mí yo le doy el, el 9 y medio. He says, you know, um, basically, I, I don't know what type of fighter he is. I don't know what level to put him on. I've never seen him fight. What I do is I, I believe in my preparation. I'm confident in what I do. And uh, I'm the best fighter in the division. And uh, we're going to prove that again tonight. Ishe Smith, Eris Landy Lara is the type of fighter a lot of junior middleweights don't want to fight, yet he's a guy you've wanted to fight for quite a while. Tell us why. Uh, he's, they, they consider him the best in the world. That's what they say. He's one of the best. I feel that I'm one of the best. And uh, I've always fought the best fighters available. And what better way than to fight the best? They say he's the best, so let's make it happen. You were very critical of the fight he fought against Canelo. You said he ran around the ring a lot. Do you anticipate that kind of fight from him tonight? Do you think he'll be a little more stationary? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know what he's going to bring. He may come out and want to wow these uh, great fans in San Antonio, these uh, Spanish fans, and he may want to come out and prove a point, which would be better for me. That means I don't have to do a lot of chasing. So who knows how he's going to come out tonight? We're prepared for everything, though. I know you don't like to acknowledge it. We joke about it. You're 36 years old. You can't count on too many chances. Do you have uh, a sense of urgency tonight, or is this just another big fight for you? This is another big fight. I mean, Bernard Hopkins is, what, 50 years old? Who would think he's still going? All I need to do is, like Al D Davis say, just win, baby. And that's, that's it. And, and the rest will take care of itself. You know, I'm not worried about it. I got a lot of years left in me. I just want to come out here and perform. Had a great camp. It's been tremendous. Uh, a great team behind me. Uh, and I'm not even thinking about closing this chapter. It's, we're still writing this book. Thank you very much, Ishe. Good luck. So it sets the stage here at the Illusions Theater in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. I'm joined once more by my partner, Steve Farhood. And Steve, I want to ask you a little bit about Eris Lani Lari. He comes off a big fight with Canelo Alvarez. It's a fight that a lot of people actually thought he might have won. The decision, of course, went to Canelo. And now he fights a guy that most people are saying, well, he really should beat. Can there be a hangover effect for him? For a lot of fighters, Barry, I'd say yes, not for Eris Landy Lara. He doesn't care who he fights. He doesn't care if he's fighting Ishe Smith, Will Smith. He doesn't care if he's fighting Smith Brothers cough drops. He never saw Ishe Smith fight. He really doesn't care. He brings his A game, and that's all he cares about. In, re in uh, response to something that uh, Ishe said, I want to see some urgency. I want to see him attack more urgently than he ever fought, attacked before if he wants a chance to win. All right, well, I'll turn to our partner then, Raul Marquez, and uh, talk about Ishe Smith. He's 36 years old. Historically, he is a counter puncher. As Steve said, he wants to see some urgency. Do you really give this guy a legitimate chance to win this fight? Well, I give him a long shot. I mean, Lara is just a different level of fighter. Unless Ishe Smith shows us something different today, tonight, 
Uh, I mean, he did say he was going to be aggressive all night long. He was going to pressure him, cut off the ring, work the body, make him fight, force him to engage. And, uh, you know, if this is his last opportunity at the big time, he needs to fight that way and, and load everything he's got and go out on the shield. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting yeah. just to see what kind of a tactical fight this becomes because both these guys inherently are counter punchers. And here's a look at Ishe Smith, been quite a ride for him. 14 years as a professional fighter. Showbox viewers, of course, first came to know Smith way back in 2003, springboarding him into the reality genre where he appeared on the network series, The Contender. It is 30th professional fight at 34 years of age. He won a decision over Cornelius Bundridge and took the 154 pound title with him, but he lost it in his first defense. This fight was originally scheduled for May 2nd, but Ishe stepped aside so that Lara could fight Canelo Alvarez for a much bigger payday. Tonight, 36 years old, and a counterpuncher attempts to capture a world title in what could very likely be, Steve, his last hurrah. Talk about the keys. For Ishe Smith, Barry, it's gonna take relentless pressure to get to Lara. No backward steps or rest periods allowed. Smith can't just walk in. Lateral movement to the left will partially neutralize Lara's big weapon, his southpaw left hand. And Canelo beat Lara because of body punching, which just happens to be Smith's number one strength. Ishi Smith needs to put all his 36 years, oh, amateur and pro, of experience into this fight if he really wants to pull off a huge upset tonight if he would win. And I think he's going to get the test of his life tonight against a very experienced and a very talented fighter in Eris Landi Lara. And here is the 31-year-old Eris Landi Lara, five-time Cuban national champion before he came to the United States in 2008. He is a natural counterpuncher. He wins his fights with speed. He's a left-hander. He's got very fluid movement. And that is what's made him one of the best 154 pounders in the world. He did win the interim WBA title three fights ago, elevated to world champion after one successful defense. Then last July, he fought Canelo Alvarez in a 12-round non-title fight. Lara lost the decision, but it was a disputed one, as we said, maybe due to his fighting style. And that is a counter-punchy kind of style that we expect him to probably fight tonight, too. He still has his belt. The question is, Steve, can he keep it? He's a big favorite to do so. The keys for Arislandi Lara, he needs to keep a comfortable distance. That'll make this a chess match, which suits him well. If Smith moves forward, Lara can walk him onto the Cuban's left hand. And finally, Smith has never been down, much less stopped. Lara should peck and poke and think decision win. Lara has fought way better opposition than Ishi Smith, and he continues to do that by fighting the best like Ishi Smith, and he just wants to show that he's the best junior middleweight in the world. All right, that is the storyline for our main event on this Showtime Boxing Special Edition. Arislandi Lara, Ishe Smith. It is a battle for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World, scheduled for a maximum of 12 rounds. And once more, we take it to the center of the ring and the ring announcer tonight, Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Alamo Dome here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Presented by Mayweather Promotions and Showtime. And sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the Executive Director, William Coates. WBA Supervisor in Attendance, Aurelio Fiengo. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10-point must system. From New Jersey, John Pottery. From Panama, Ignacio Robles. And from Puerto Rico, Nelson Vasquez. When the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, class of 2015 Hall of Famer to be inducted, Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. 
San Antonio, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing to you first, planning out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed in red and blue, he weighed it officially 153 and one half pounds. His professional record stands at 26 victories, six defeats with 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former IBF junior middleweight champion and currently rated the number 10 WBA super welterweight contender in the world from Las Vegas, Nevada. Here is the challenger, Asian Sugar Jay Smith. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting into the blue corner. He wears black with gold, trimmed in the flag of Cuba and the USA. Weighing it officially 154 pounds, this veteran has an outstanding professional record that stands at 19 victories. Two defeats, two draws with 12 wins coming by way of knockout from Santa Clara, Cuba. Here is the reigning, defending WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Eddie Slundy, the American Dream Lara! Ishay, take your shirt off, bro. Take your shirt off. Campeon, campeon. Ishe, Ishe. Ishe. You gentlemen, we're giving your instructions, Ishe. You understand everything total? Yes. In Tiena Regla. Toca mano, touch gloves, God bless. The numbers. Lara has a very long reach for a 5'9 super welterweight. You see, he has a six inch reach advantage. You combine that with his legs, and you can see why he can be a very difficult guy for Smith or anyone else to fight. Unified rules here, no standing in count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. The fight cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and the fight becomes official after four rounds. Barry. All right, Stephen, I think uh, the big question mark, of course, is over the head of Ishe Smith. I mean, is he going to be able to change his style and take this fight to Arislandi Lara? Is he? <laughs> well, we'll see. That That is uh, the plan for Ishe. He, he's got no choice. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to just fight him from a uh, long range because uh, Lana will pick him apart that way. He's got to make him fight. He's got to push him back. got to be aggressive you know, like I said he was. So here we go, round one. And just real quickly, you saw in the graphic, the tail of the tape graphic, that uh, Smith did not want to weigh in tonight. That's just a superstition of his. Lara re weighed in wearing sweatpants up to 170. <laughs> Now the thing about Lara is, yes, he's a guy who will use the ring and he is a counter puncher, but when it gets down to it, he's also got some pop. Left hand pop, we've seen it. There's a double left hand from Lara. We talked about Smith having to do. He did crowd Lara a little bit and got there with a couple of shots. Good body shots by Ishii. I mean, he's more of that. He to invest early, keep working. It's only the first round. The more he works the body, the better it'll be for him. Early in this fight, hand speed clearly on the side of Lara. Seems every time he punches, Ishii is going downstairs. Like Ishii's confidence, look, he hands up, he's just walking him, walking up to him. Something tells me Ishii's jab is not going to be a factor in this fight. I think not. 
And Lara really is not moving nearly as much as you might expect. He's standing there boxing. Him. Yeah, no, he's not. He's standing uh, a lot more on his ground. And that's better for easy. Good body shot by Isha Smith again. A full takedown. It's not worth any points at this point, is it? I don't think so. I wonder if Ishe's high guard is bothering Lara a little bit. Lara doesn't see the openings necessarily. He's going to have to open Smith up with feints and counter shots. There's a double left hand, no and, damage. And uppercuts up the middle to open up that guard. There was a good right hand by Lara. Caught was, Smith ducking. Yeah, that, that was the best side of the, the, the round so far. Competitive first round so far. Right hand underneath. I need double and triple that jab. Now bring that right hand underneath. It's there for you all day. But keep the jab on him. Hands up and keep that double, triple jab on him. Because he's backing up. He's running already. You won that round already. Just keep the pressure on him like you're doing. Watch him, Yeah, and count. Watch him. Game was cool. Tim. Okay? Everything, everything good. Going there. Just relax, relax, okay? Use the jab. Hey, when you close. <laughs> Little join going on at the end of the round, which means absolutely nothing in the great scheme of things. <laughs> Gamesmanship. Well, is she, yeah, is she did say he was going to be in his face, and he was in his face all the way to the, he almost spent the minute rest over there in his yeah, corner, too. That's right. Laura, incidentally, does understand English. He doesn't speak English. He's just not comfortable enough with it, but he's, he is conversant with it. So I'm sure he heard all the insults. Hey, don't punch! Step, 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 step. You should doing a lot of woofing. Not showing Lara much respect. Yeah, at all. He's using his uh, man strength and... Trying to manhandle him, trying to pick him up and rough him up. Trying to get in his head. Let's see if uh, Smith is able to land that right uppercut that his trainer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, was calling for. Sure is landing good body shots. That was a very good left hand of the body. And should Lara decide to use a lot of this ring, it's a hard canvas that favors movers. So far, Lara has opted not so much to move, but to try to box Isha Smith. Now he's on the bike a little bit. Stop running, stop running. Isha Smith said, stop running. I think he added a uh, Spanish derogatory word in there as well. Hand, yes. Stop running. Smith did a good job of working the body, though. They're not huge shots. But there's a lot of them. Well, as was the case in the Canelo fight, some of those punches are getting through, some are being blocked. Yeah, but Smith just keeps walking him down and keeping his hands up high, tight, frame defense, and is making it hard for Lara to go through the guard. Got to be discouraging for Lara. Yeah, Smith only 14% connects. Good overhand right there. Lara. That one straight a little bit low. Now this is the Lara that we know and love. <laughs> yes, they could move, hit, not get hit, clinch. I don't know about the love part. But. All right, well, one out of two. <laughs> It's a figure of speech, right? There. Yes, exactly. Better work by Lara throwing in combinations and throwing when he's flat-footed. 
Kick. Don't fight. See the clinch yep. by Lara. Bell's coming, Bell's coming, Bell's coming. You watch when he clinches, he comes off of that, he throws it past. Oh, no, no. I'm here. I'm here. And again, Isha Smith expending a lot of energy just in woofing at Lara. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Concentrate on them body shots. Uh, he's damn, there for you. I want more. I want more. He's running. He's going to break down. Let his ass keep running. Let's break him down. Okay. Breathe. 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 There you go. That's what I want. Breathe and relax. We, we win it anyway. Take a drink. There we go. We got this here. I told you he was going to run all day. Drink the water, man. Okay, want some more? Give me, the, bring the bucket. No, no, I'm all right. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Hey, round three of this 12-round championship fight. Both rounds have been reasonably close so far, I believe. Well, power shots landed in round two, eight to six edge for Lara. see how Lara can frustrate an opponent. It surprises me that, you know, see how he moves to his left, and he, right there, he's moving to his left, he's gonna run right into his, his right hand. But that's his comfort zone, he likes moving that way. Left hand is to move to the right. And put their lead foot outside, it's just be, Lead foot, which is the right. left foot. I have a foot position there, you see? And you can see Yusei Smith coming very close to stepping on Lara's toes almost yeah. every time. Yeah, they're fighting for that. Hey, don't they're fighting punch, for that don't position. Punch, In terms of power, Lara is all left-handed. He's a one-handed fighter. You do not see much of a right hook from him at all, ever. Oh, he's like jab, left hand, jab. That's his favorite combination. That's bread and butter, jab, left hand, jab. Well, you know, you talked about the Cuban style. That's, yes. That's exactly what we're seeing. Jab here. There it goes again. Jab, left hand, jab. But he wins fights that way. That's what I was going to say. It, you know, it may not it's sell important. tickets, but it does win fights. Yeah. A lot more movement from Lara this round than in the first two. And, and you can tell it's frustrating Isha Smith a little bit. He's not nearly as effective in this round. Yeah, Lara needs to continue to use his footwork. Ishi Smith, he's, he's got a set, you see, he missed that there. There that movement, Lara, yeah. moves to his left and then pops the right hand. That, that's when he's dangerous, that, that's his game right there. Well, I hate to say it, guys, but this is the most movement we've seen from Lara and probably his most effective work as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's the old thing of dance with what brought you. Yeah. Step, step, step. Bell's gonna ring. Bell's gonna ring. Bell's coming. Bell's coming. Hey. All, all he's trying to do is set. He, he got to set the throw punches. You don't have to set the throw punches. Just keep, keep the jab in his face and keep the left hand to the body and come back up to the top. Everything is good, baby. Very good, very good. Hey, keep using the feint though. You got to keep feinting, okay? He don't want to punch because they're looking for one shot, okay? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He's got no, you're getting stronger. Good. Everything, when he get close, every now and then, I got to have that uppercut in there, though. Okay, 
It's the experienced voice of Ronnie Shields that you hear in the corner. This is round four. Interesting number, Lara, 40% of his power shots connecting. In multiple fights, he's landed the highest percentage of power shots of any fighter in boxing, 52%. So he's down in that number so far against Isha. A little tougher guy to hit. Yeah, Smith's doing a great job of keeping his gloves up, that's for sure. Yeah, he is. Isha's yeah, going to keep, keep coming forward, ton of pressure, body rough him up, push him down, elbow him, hit him up wherever he could hit him. Just to frustrate Lara, he doesn't like that roughness. If you see every time he, they, they clinch, he looks for help, he looks at the referee, he wants him to break him apart. But so far, Lara is, uh, you know, giving, doing the, the, his excellent boxing. You know, he's moving, he pulls him, he's back out. When he Smith sets, he throws and he goes. Smith has to set to throw. No, 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 no. Which is exactly what Ronnie yeah. Shields was talking about in the corner. See the numbers in this round so far for Smith. Those are all caught on the gloves of Lara or missed. Smith 13% last round. I did give that round to Lara. I think slowly but surely you see Lara is finding openings. He's opening the guard up a little bit more. Now he's landing body shots with the left hand. Straight left hand down the middle, change it up. The left hand, up, over, downstairs. Oh, there it goes again. Off the movement. Very hard to fight. That, that's, he's got to keep doing that. You can tell, it's really frustrating, Ishe Smith. Body shot from Lara. What? Right. Look at Lara, very smart. He holds him and he walks him down. Come on, and both the, the come more on. he frustrates Ishii, the better it is for Lara. Ishii cannot afford to lose his head like that. He's got to keep his composure and, and keep the anger inside. Just be smart. But it, it's it's hard. It's frustrating with a guy like Lara. That's, that's what makes him the kind of fighter he is. And if Smith does choose to get a little more aggressive. And a little more chippy. Remember, Smoker said in his interview to us, his philosophy, let them fight. That's his rep as a referee. Fighters like that. So maybe Ishe can get away with a little more than he might against another ref. Or with another ref. Oh, that was a good left hand. No, 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 no. Off balance left hand. Just Very good, very good. Hey, fuck the referee. Keep doing what you gotta do. Keep doing what you gotta do, because he's tired out now. Looking good and strong. You're pushing him around. Keep that heat on him, but I need more jab. And just keep cutting him up and keep banging him. Banging him towards the arms and in the body, like you're doing. Give it a bucket. Okay. Let's go. Take a drink. Don't reach. Okay. Step in with the double, triple jab. What is Floyd thinking? He's thinking this guy's got to really be frustrating to fight. <laughs> you know, that, that's what strikes me, Stephen, just watching Lara. You know, it. it it's not like watching a piece of fine art, but you got to admire it. Well, he's effective. Not always pleasing no. to watch, but you know he has been in some exciting fights, as I said at the top of the broadcast. This fight with Angulo was thrilling. Great fight. Lara has not been caught along the ropes in quite some time, and that has minimized Smith's effectiveness. Harry got there with a quick right hand and the left of the body, and Lara covers up. Two more body shots, and a third, and then an uppercut. 
one of the better rallies that Smith has had in the last couple rounds. He's got to keep that going. See, he, he made the mistake by stopping this. And just like uh, Eddie Mustafa said, you know, don't worry about the referee. Just do your work. Keep getting ugly in there. Keep roughing him up. See that? At, at long range right there, that's not his fight. That, that's when Lada's going to pick him apart from an outside. Step. Step. Good, good, good. Oh. A little swelling on the left cheek. Abishay Smith, nothing serious. I don't think Smith was hurt there. He stumbled. It must have been defeat. Look at Lada, the way he changes heights, he changes levels. At the same time, he's throwing punches from there. He's up high, throws the left, throws, the, throws low, throws a high left. Only one of those shots got there. Oh, oh that's nice. That's... See, what we're seeing here, I think, is largely what we saw in the Canelo fight, at least what I saw in the Canelo fight, which is that Laris punches landed clean or cleaner than his opponents did. He's just... A tough guy to fight. And Ishe cannot stand there and let Lara pop shot him. Because Lara will land most of those shots. Very accurate Lara with his shots. He, fast and accurate, precise. I mean, he, difficult guy to fight. Look at his core, he keeps his core. Just kind of poking the bear. <laughs> Raul said that uh, Lara was changing the angle of his punches, the plane of his punches. He was changing the plane of his head, too. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta stop playing with him. Okay. You gotta stop fucking around like that, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Let your hands go, man. Okay. Keep digging and digging to that body. Hitting them on them arms. Action from round five. Watch the feet. The lead foot. That's why Ishe stumbled, because Lara's right foot was on top of Ishe's left foot. Later in the round, this is what Ishe Smith needs more of. Smith working the body, but he's got a stationary target for a brief moment. I didn't see one of those punches scored, to tell you the truth. All right, come on, baby. Here we go. This is round six of this 12-round fight, and Ishe Smith's going to have to find something. Crowd takes up a chat now. Lucia Smith said he didn't think the crowd was going to be a factor here. Simple punches by Lada. You see jab, lead, lead to the body, maybe one hook, but maybe straight shots. And remember, Lara's got that six-inch reach advantage. It does make a difference when he pops that jab and then takes a half step back. He's out of range. Quick left hand from Lara. No single punch is that damaging, but it's a cumulative thing. There was a good left to the body by Smith. And again, those are being caught on the arms and elbows. Stay up, Ishe. I agree with you, Barry, but it's all Ishe can do. He's got to move his hands and hope that the judges see that and score for him just based yeah. on aggressiveness, yeah. even if it's not effective aggressiveness. Well, in fact, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in an earlier round between rounds said, hit him anywhere, hit him in the arms. Yeah. I say that's what the Hall of Fame old trainer, Georgia Benton, said, just hit him anywhere. Hit him on the arms, hit him on the elbows, hit him on the waist, hit him on the legs, on the side of the legs when, when the referee's not watching. You know? Stop his mobility. That was one of George Foreman things. George Foreman's yeah. things. I mean, he would hit you on the shoulders and the arms and pretty soon your hands were at your waist. And Rocky Marciano before that. Right. Well, Larry's starting to pot shot. Uh, left hand. 
Stay up, stay up. He's throwing a right hook this fight. I don't, I don't remember seeing it. No. Oh, there was a combination. Ended to the right hand. Combinations. I'm here, I'm here, no don't punch. No, no go for no go for oh. <laughs> Don't punch, step, step. Step, step. They can't get discouraged. He's got to accelerate like this. Yeah, but again, mostly on your arms and elbows. One body <laughs> shot got there. Step, 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 step. Final 10 seconds of round six. <laughs> Halftime of this world championship fight. Misha Smith, two of 106 in jabs. Tough to jab against the lefty. And the big difference, the power shots of Lara. He hasn't thrown more, but he's landed more. And we take a look at some of the highlights. Raul made a great point about how Lara changes the plane of his punches, changes the plane of his head, makes it very difficult. He's using a lot, little bit of movement when he's stationary. Ishe pounding the body with both hands. Not always landing, a lot of the punches deflected as Barry has pointed out. And Lara is so, so accurate with that straight left hand. He throws it quickly, he doesn't overload it, but he scores really convincingly. And I, I've had Lara winning uh, every round since the first. As have I. And now I agree with you guys too. Which means we have to be wrong, right? That's right. <laughs> Must be Spitz is winning the fight. There's a body shot and a left hand in the head by Ishe Smith. Step. Step, 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 step. only but that punch is getting here yeah for a lot of he's really opening up the garden going to the second half of the fight it, it's just he's got to make something happen I mean the only way he's gonna make something happen is by what he did right now body shots come up the middle keep pushing him just keep on top of him keep on his face he does it at times but then he backs up he's got to keep it going then again it's hard to do it with a guy that He's there, then he's not there, then he changes heights. He's hitting you with left hands, jabs from different angles. Difficult. Now there were three good body shots from Isha Smith, and then Isha Smith turns, and Lara whacks him in the back of the head. Yes, Smith looked at Steve Smolger, and Smolger said, keep fighting. There was a good left hand from Lara. Smith trying to work the body. Lara peppering him with the left hand. Lara's been down twice, both times in the Angulo fight, which was a war. Only time he's been down. Ishe never down. And I don't think really either man has been hurt in this fight so far. That was a good body shot, and another from Ishe Smith. This is where he wants Lara. He can keep it there, but a good left hand off the ropes by Lara. It's hard to get uh, with Lara with a clean shot. So far, you know, Ishe, he hits him, but not clean like Lara's landing clean shots. Left hands over the top and straight down the middle. The, the jabs do a solid job. Good left hand again, a lunging left hand by Lara. In some ways, we're watching the Canelo fight all over again. Exactly. There was a right hand in the head, the left of the body, and now again, Ishe Smith has Lara where he wants him, and Lara ties him up. Step, 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 step. By 
by and large, a little bit of a better round, I thought, for Isha Smith. A, a difficult round to score yes. in the manner that all of Eris Laguilar's rounds are difficult to score. Right hook. All right? Okay, hands up, keep it up, and keep the pressure, keep him backing up. Keep him going the way he's going. This is eight rounds. All right? Could we go get him now? All right, let's go. Because he's dead now, man. Load up on that bitch, you Keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging. Both hands. Okay. Keep keep this up. Just like this one? Okay. Keep this up. Okay, okay, Alright. Just keep that right hand up. Let's roll, let's roll. I got it. We come to round eight. I thought a little bit better round, round seven for Isha Smith. I thought I gave him the round. I, I gave him the round two. And I mean, that's all he could do, you know, just keep digging and, and use both hands. Combination, punches and punches. Keep his hands up. Don't get countered. Thing about Lara, he gives you nothing in terms of body language, in terms of facial expression. Nothing. No change from round one. Hit him to the body, no change. Oh. Nice combination from Lara, very quick. When Lara does, or rather, when uh, Smith does get Lara to stop on the ropes, he does do a little bit of damage to the body. Difficult for the judges to determine how much of those body shots land, land clean, land partial, I and mean, it's very difficult to say. That was a nice thing to see. Lara was painting the man with the jab, palm with the jab, the body, the head, and he looped an overhand left over the top, and he caught Ishii coming in. Combination again by Lara. The ropes. A straight left hand by Lara. Is she just running into the left hand? And again, Lara punches himself off the ropes. Yeah, Lara covers up and right off of that. When, when Ishii stops punching, that's when Lara goes. And he catches him. Lara got Smith turned completely and hit him in the left hand. Talked about Lara having no right hook, but he does throw the left hand in a variety of ways. Raul mentioned an overhand left. He can throw it straight. He can lead with it. And he's done all of that. In this yeah, fight. scoring with it. Yeah. There it is again, a lead yes. left. Good body shot. Very high connect percentage, too, from Lara. All I need you to do is just keep working like what a water, 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 water. I got it. Hey. All I need you to do is just keep working like that. He did, he did, I'm right there. He did, I'm right there. Oh, okay. Listen, all you gotta do is just keep your hands moving, keep the jab in the face. He gotta set the throw punches. You don't have to set the throw punches, okay? Just keep working like that. Hey, the uppercuts are there, though. All day, okay? Stay off the road, okay? No more road, okay? They want him to throw more left lead to the body. Okay? The Cuba Junior said throw more lead to the body. Which was is work for him.
This is round nine. Ronnie Shields wanted uppercuts. Louis Kubas Jr. wanted leads to the body. Any other voices in there? <laughs> there goes that lead to the body. Up the top now. Hey, what this is a more exciting fight than what, what I expected. I think that was making an exciting issue too by coming forward. I just think Lars, Lars tough. And he takes what you give him. He says gloves are up, he hits him with a left hand to the body. He says gloves are lower, he hits him to the head. Yeah, and you can't call what Lara is doing running because he's throwing punches and he's connecting with punches. There he is. Look how he baits him in with the jab. That, that, that's, that's where he, you know, that, that's not his game right there. He moves to one side, moves to one side, moves to one side. Then he, when he moves again, then he pops that left hand right hook. Or jazz. It, it doesn't, you can't set, you know. Ishii's got to be more on his toes. He's too flat footed. He, he's not going to catch it. Well, he's also right now, he's following. Yes. I think maybe this round you can pick more of a case for Lara running. Yeah, it was as if he heard you and yeah, said, I'm going to show exactly. you Barry Hopkins. Yes, I really am, though. Well, I hate to echo what you've been saying, but those body shots blocked. Forearms. In general, though, perhaps because of the type of opponent, Lara is moving less than he did against Canelo. There's no doubt about that. And that's like there were times where he was just flat out running. Well, I think in terms of power, you have to respect, needless to say, respect Canelo's power. And with all due respect to Isha Smith, I'm not sure he's as concerned about Isha Smith's power. Yeah, well, Lana did, you know, I did ask him in the meeting, that was, you know, did you feel something? And kind of, did you feel his power? Did, did he hit you? Did he hurt you? Now he said, I felt that he was just strong in the inside when he was pushing me around, but... I think he, he had to throw Canelo's power because he, you know, he really was moving a lot with Canelo. Great. Step, step, step. Step, step, step. Count, count, step, count, count. He just has that ability to frustrate any opponent. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a combination of, of moving his feet and his reflexes are fantastic. Well, you're going to want to get ready to play Show Streak. It's a great new game from Showtime Sports. Fight fans, here we go. It's time to pick fight winners and win big with Show Streak. Go to showstreak.com and pick who you think will win the upcoming bouts on Showtime Boxing. Rack up wins and watch your streak grow. Take a loss and rebuild your streak from zero. The bigger the streak, the bigger the prizes. Hit 50 in a row and you're eligible for the grand prize. A trip for two plus tickets to a Showtime pay-per-view event. Get your streak on. Go to showstreak.com to register, then pick and play to win big. All you have to do is pick who you think will win tomorrow night's fights here on Showtime and start to build your streak. The bigger the streak, the better the prizes. Go to showstreak.com, sign up, make those picks. I have two in a row. Do you? I picked the first two in this fight. Okay. Yeah. You're on your way, Barry. Uh, yeah, 48 more. I'm in Vegas. And you've never been to Vegas, so. Never. <laughs> well, if Smith is indeed down, and we have him down, the only thing he can do is just accelerate, step one more lively to Lara, try to get him pinned against the ropes. And when he gets him, let his hands go. That's all he can do. Which, the only way. which in truth is what he's been doing. But the problem is not enough. Not no, enough. Yeah. No, and Lara doesn't stop enough. That time goes back to the ropes, and Lara pops a left hand. It was a right hand. 
Watching Lara tonight, I don't know that this performance is going to help or hurt his reputation among fans. But among junior middleweights, who wants to fight him? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe it's amazing that he's fought as many top junior middleweights in his career as he has. Paul Williams, Carlos Molina, Canelo. They fought him. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you can say what you will, but you got to respect what he does. <laughs> Left hand to the body is a very, very strong punch for Lara. He's just a very accurate puncher, too. Oh. And you heard Ronnie Shields say in the corner, he doesn't really have to set down to throw that punch. He throws it on the move, and it's sharp. And he gets down low for that left hand. Again, you know, the, the height to the body, then he's low. For no work, it used to be something similar to that. But he was a little bit more flat-footed and, and gave you angles, kept turning you. Lara, he really moves and gets on his toes after he throws the left hand. I just think he's a real pro. You know, I, yes, he is. I'm not, you know, paying $500 for a ticket, but you got to appreciate what he does. Well, it takes all types of boxing. We all love punches, we all love knockouts. But not everybody can or does fight that way. Lara certainly does. Then the fans were turned off by this. I understand. I do too. I do too. But you know, if in fact the name of the game is hit, don't be hit. He does it as well as anybody out there. Now those body shots, I thought land. Hey, very good, baby. Very good. I will come to the wall, Ben. I need the water, I need the water. Take a look at action from round 10. I talked about the left hand to the body. That one might have bounced a little bit off Ishe's left elbow, but for the most part, Come on, son. he's gotten that shot last in when Ishe's gloves, gloves are hot. I gotta have these rounds, man. Let's go to work, baby. Drink it up. Drink some water. Okay, now let's go to work. Keep that jab on him, keep that jab on him. So we come to the championship rounds, rounds 11 and 12. This is 11, six minutes of boxing left for Isha Smith to do something spectacular. See, Glider really... You know, he's sitting down more in the shot than you know he's winning. Look at him. He's a lot busier, too. Giving him angles. He's throwing three and four punch combinations. Yeah, he's fighting at least early in this round like he wants to close the deal. conversation about Lara and how effective he is is not to say anything bad about what Isha Smith is doing. He's trying to execute yeah, a game plan. Yeah. Lara's just not allowing it. Yeah, he tried. He tried. I, I said, I mean, that, that was the only way he had a chance of winning by attacking, but it's just a different level fight with Lara. And for some reason, Isha Smith has always wanted to fight on his Landy Lara. He must be nuts. <laughs> That was a very good right hand. Probably the best punch of the fight. Look at Lara's composer. He's poor. <laughs> no expression on his face. Is he tired? Does he don't look tired? No, he doesn't look tired to me at all. Is he worried about anything? <laughs> Couple good body shots from Misha Smith. Beautiful left hook to the body by Smith because he went around the elbow. He moved his feet to get a better angle and went around the right elbow of Lara. Something he has not done the whole fight. Oh. All right, with an old Sugar Ray Leonard stop. Oh. Good body shot again from 
Keep boxing, okay? Nothing else. Just keep doing what you're doing. No. Everything else is good. Come on, you gotta give me all you got now. Come on, give me all you got. Both hands. Both hands. Well, he gonna run like a bitch. Laura, 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 Laura. Keep the pressure. He gonna run fast this round. But don't you worry about it. That's gonna work. Leave it all here. Leave it all right here. So the 12th and final round of this fight, and uh, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad saying to Ishe Smith, just leave it all here, just go for it. Ishe, stop here, stop here. Token la mano, token, token. Suerte, suerte, go, go. <laughs> suerte, suerte, good luck, yeah, good luck. So this, the final three minutes of this fight. Don't spear, don't spear, Campion. Don't spear, Campion. Good job, Campion. Move. A lot of Spanish with smoker, huh? Yeah, pretty good, huh? <laughs> Quick left hand from Lara, another one. Step, step, step. It's all missed.
So it too is in the hands of the judges. There's two great former champions, Roddy Shields and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. And those judges, Barry, John Pottere from New Jersey, 29 years of experience. He's worked a lot of big title fights. Ignacio Robles from Panama, 17 years of experience. He's got a ton of interim title fights, for what that's worth. And Nelson Vasquez, 27 years a judge from Puerto Rico, probably the most respected judge in Puerto Rico. Veteran official. Take a look at the final number, Steve. Well, you're going to see that Lara has a little lower connect percentage than usual. That's because he was flashing that jab and pouring with it and really not even trying to land it, but it counted as a punch. Congratulations to all around. I don't believe there's uh, a lot of doubt about this as we look back. This is the seventh round. You know, Lee Shea Smith had his moments where he moved his hands, pounded the body. Some of the punches landed, some were blocked. I actually gave the seventh round to Ishe Smith. But the long stretches in this fight, it was what you're seeing here, Arislan Lara bending at the knees, changing angles, staying in the middle of the ring, frustrating Ishe Smith, who could only do work when Lara was stationary. And the left hand of Lara landing flush again and again and again. And that was the difference in the fight. Twelfth round, a lot more movement from Lara. Perhaps not as much as we saw against Canelo. So there you have it, and uh, a convincing performance for Lara. It's not anything he's going to want to put in a time capsule, I don't believe. But you know what? He wins, I think, and he will retain the title, I think. But let's hand it up to Joe Martinez, and we'll see what he thinks. Here's Joe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Here are the totals. Both judges, Robles and Vasquez, score at 119-109. Judge John Pottery, 117-111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, and it's landing the American Dream Lord. So there is your winner, Arislan de Lara. Not a lot of doubt about this one, I don't believe. Very much a unanimous decision on all three judges' cards. Let's go to the center of the ring. Steve Farhood with the winner. Steve? Isha Smith, first your reaction to the judges' scores. Well, 119, 109 is. That's crazy. 115, I think 111 was. Uh, what would the other score? Whatever that was. 2, 119, 109. I think 118, 111 or 118, 110. That's a lot. But I did my best, man. I w you know, you, when you saw me fight, impression somebody trying to get him, I tried to make it a fight, man. He's very tough to fight with that style, ripping and running. And like an amateur style, is very tough. But, you know, I, I, I gave it all out here. I, I let it hang. Ripped to the body. I, I did what I could do. Could you, could you have done anything differently? It didn't seem like, you know, when he was stationary, you pounded the body as best you could. Some of the shots got through, some didn't. But when he was in the middle of the ring, he's so hard to hit, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's very difficult to hit because he's so long. He got a long reach. A uh, lot of pitter pattery stuff that looked good to the judges, you know. But, you know, I did what I had to do. No excuses. We had a great camp. I went out there. I let it hang. But, uh, you know, you want something, you lose something. That's, the, that, that's life, man. Like, sometimes you... You're going to get that curveball, you're sitting on the fastball, and you're going to strike out. But you got to get back up to the plate and no, go to the dugout and realize you got another at bat and keep swinging. What did Floyd say to you just now? Oh, he said, keep your head up. He was proud of me. You know, he's one of the best in the division. I went out there, I, I gave it all I had. I, I ripped to the body, tried to slow him down. He's very tough. Uh, but I did what I had to do. I, th I thought it was a good showing. It was a pretty good fight. I put myself at risk a lot. I got hit with a lot of shots, and uh, that's that. You going to stick with this? Come on, Steve. No, why are you asking me crazy questions, man? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. He didn't knock me out. Uh, he's very tough to fight. Uh, you know, I wasn't hurt. He caught me with a couple good shots, but you know, I'm 36. I had a, a good camp. Uh, Willie Monroe, 
Darrell, uh, Darrell Wright, uh, those guys got uh, Darrell Van Horn. They go, those guys got me ready, and uh, of course I'm gonna stick with it. We wish you luck, Ishe. Thanks. Thank you. Well, a very philosophical Ishe Smith that we just heard from, and uh, everything he said, of course, is uh, spot on. I'm sure we will see him again. He doesn't have to be embarrassed with this loss. He lost to a very good fighter, arguably one of the best fighters in his division, who maintains his championship belt. And right now, he is with Steve Farhood. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we have uh, Aris Landy, Larry, the winner. Aris Landy, do you feel that you dominated enough to get the uh, scores that you did? Easy, easy win. Sentiste como dominaste fácil a coger todo toda la pelea? Claro que sí. Este, yo nunca lo había visto boxear. El primer round se me hizo un poco porque yo estaba estudiando y ya después del segundo round ya las aguas cogieron su nivel. Ya lo dominé totalmente. This is the first round. I just want to see exactly how he fought, how he moved, what his movements were, because I've never seen him before. And then after that, you know, I dominated him every single round. Was his body attack effective in Eris Landy's uh, mind? El cuerpo, el trabajo del cuerpo este, de, de, nada. Bien fuerte con mi condición, con mi jack, y nada. He says, nah, I worked very hard with Jack, you know, Ronnie Shields, that over at Plex, and, you know, that's nothing. All right, the obvious question, what would he like next? Get it. Quiero, quiero, a lo mejor es, quiero Floyd. En el fight, quiero Floyd. Pelea, lo mejor es lo mejor, y él es uno de los mejores de la división, y yo quiero, yo quiero a Floyd. Uh -huh. He says, you know, I want to fight the best. I want to fight Floyd Mayweather. You know, um, that's that's one of the best fighters in the world, and that's who I want to fight. I want to test myself against the best. Already beat Canelo, and we beat everyone else in the division. I don't think we even needed Louis de Cuvas to translate there. Eris Landy want, Lara wants Floyd Mayweather. Thanks, Eris Landy. Congratulations. Back to Barry. All right. Thanks very much, Steve. So there you have the winner, and uh, with uh, the champion, Raul Marquez. And Raul, let's talk a little bit about this performance of Lara. You know. You might not, as we said, want to put it in a time capsule, but he does what he does very well, and the bottom line is he wins fights. Absolutely. I mean, incredible boxing skills, just the way he changes levels and throws his left leads off of that to the body, to the top, jab, left hand, then jab. He pushes his opponent. He knows when to clinch. Uh, I mean, he's a hard fighter to beat. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't want to see him fight, and a lot of fighters don't want to fight him, but he, he, he schooled Ishi Smith tonight, and he, he had a, a great performance. He did, and Ishi Smith did exactly what he told us he was going to do in, uh, in our meetings yesterday. The problem is he was fighting a guy that you just can't seem to do that against. I mean, there's nothing he, you could do with a guy. I mean, he, Ishi Smith kept coming forward. He hit him everywhere. At times, maybe he stopped and backed up, you know, but I don't think that would have made a difference. I mean, uh, Lara is just uh, incredible. He's a guy, a hard guy to hit. He's there. He's not there. You you might get something going, like you're going to do something. You hit him to the body. He covers up real well. Frame defense. I mean, it, the guy's is he's tough to fight. Yeah, I would think. It's tough and to I, figure you know, out. Just, you know, <laughs> to take you back to your own career, I mean, would, would you ever want to fight a guy like that, or did you ever fight a guy like that? Uh, no, uh, you know what? I never fought a guy like that, but I did fight a prime Fernando Vargas, and he was so sharp. You know, when you see him on, on, on the tapes, you're studying him. Oh, I think I go get to him, but once you get in the ring, I would hit him, and then he would hit me, and then he was gone. He was that sharp, so, you know, it's just a, a different tough style of fight, especially for a guy like me when I was aggressive and Ishi Smith was being aggressive all along. He just couldn't find solutions. All right, let me turn to yeah. Steve Farhood here. And Steve, give me your report card on Eris Landy Lara. I mean, you know, he does what he does, and he does it pretty darn well. I think you said it. Uh, you have to give him a good grade. The problem with Eris Landy Lara is going to be marketability. The rounds he fights tend to be similar. Round six is like round five, which is like round four. And if there's no drama, then it's hard to be marketable. It's hard to make good fights. He wants Floyd Mayweather, get online. Everybody wants Floyd Mayweather because they want the money. Of course, Floyd is, a, in my opinion, a small welterweight. And Eris Landy Lara is a junior middleweight. I, I wouldn't hold my breath if I were Eris Landy Lara. Yeah, I don't think so either. And as, uh, as uh, Raul pointed out, nobody really wants to fight this guy. So what's next for him? That's the big question mark now. But he did what he needed to do tonight. And that really was the bottom line in our main event. He retains his Super Welterweight Championship belt. Let's take a look at what happened before we ever got to that fight, though, and uh, a couple of other fights. And I thought Chris Pearson, very impressive tonight as he beat Steve Martinez. Martinez took the fight to him early, but it was all Pearson after that. Good fight for him. Yeah, Pearson's a boxer who's a pretty tough guy. He's proven himself in the World Series of Boxing against Leonardo Tyner and now against a very live opponent in Martinez. Martinez faded late. Pearson took over. All right, and the fight after that, that was Badu Jack and Francisco Sierra. And this one really was no contest. It was the body work of Badu Jack that made the difference in this fight, and it was stopped in round six. 
And I'm glad it was stopped. Sierra didn't go down, but it was a bloody battering. He got pounded to the body in round four and five. A good win for Bad Jack. And then, of course, the fight we just saw and we've just been talking about, that is Arislande Lara and Ishe Smith. And uh, you, know, you never like to say a fight was over before it was over, but perhaps this one was. Well, Ishe Smith did what he could. It sounded in the ring like he just didn't know what else he could have done. Fought the best he could. He's going to keep going. But the future is now for Arislandi Lara. Yeah, this was his night, no question about it. And he did what he does again very well. If you missed any part of tonight's telecast or you want to watch it again, it'll be re-aired later tonight at 2.15 a.m. and again on Tuesday at 10 on Show Extreme. Coming up next, it is the Emmy Award winning and Golden Globe nominated Showtime original series. You're not going to want to miss it. Homeland coming up next. Tomorrow night, Showtime Championship Boxing brings you a four-fight card. It's headlined by Amir Khan as he faces Devin Alexander in a battle of former champions. And next weekend, back-to-back -back nights of boxing, beginning with another four-fight card, the Showtime Boxing Special Edition, headlined by the WBC heavyweight champions, Adana Stevenson and Dmitry Sukoski. The following night, we close out the year with another four-fight card, only on Show Extreme. It's headlined by the interim WBA featherweight champion, Jesus Cuellar and Ruben Tamayo. Well, that's a wrap for us from here in San Antonio. For my partners, Steve Farhood and Raul Marquez, and for our entire Showtime crew, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long from the Alamo Dome.